again, we want to reiterate that our privilege as a child of God is hearing the voice of the Lord. And I love it when God speaks through his word. And he has these lovely little nuggets. Um, and I wanted to share them with you as we go into the part, what hinders us from hearing the Lord. And this is in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. And, and as we were just talking about, why do we need to hear the voice of the Lord? Well, it says the Lord, the sovereign Lord, has given me an instructive tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Mm -hmm. Isn't that our goal as Christians? We want to minister to one another. If you are weary, do you want to hear someone giving you a word that will sustain you? I do. But the next verse, it says, He wakens me morning by morning. And this is a time when it's quiet, when God can speak to He can set you apart for the day. He wakens my ear to listen as one being taught. And the Hebrew word there actually means digs out. And so sometimes he has to do that with us. He digs it out so we can hear better. And as we um, think about hearing the voice of God, what is it that keeps us from hearing? Well, we are, when God began the world, in Genesis, he talks about how he walked in the cool of the evening with Adam and Eve. They had direct communication with him. And then sin entered the picture. And if we think we have problems with the enemy, they were in a perfect place, walking with God, and the enemy came in and deceived them. And so that sin caused a separation. Now it, it's harder to hear. There's no communication because there's this huge gap. But God had a plan, and he sent Jesus to bridge that gap and to be the sacrifice for our sin. And so, when we receive Jesus as our Savior, then that communication is now restored. So, we get a hearing ear. We can hear the voice of God. But, as we know, we are not sinless forever. And little by little, Sometimes sin creeps in. And so that's why God has to dig out our ear. So we can <laughs> It's wonderful that he cared enough for us to bridge that gap and to, to speak to our hearts, to speak to his word, to give us that those little nuggets of encouragement to keep us going and we have to continually examine ourselves see if we have any little hidden things that he wants us to bring to him let his blood cleanse us lord forgive me for that little thing that comes between me and you i want to get rid of it so that i can hear you clearly okay uh so we talked about sin that interferes with our hearing God. And so we want to show you a couple of examples here. Things, there's so many noises out there. There's so many sounds. And so you guys are, young people are tuning into this stuff. This was in the paper Sunday. Uh, parents have a hard job curbing children's social media and phone addiction. Apple came out and said, hey, no, they ain't got a problem with phone addictions. Well, they kind of like it, I guess, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but it is a problem. And it's not just for our tweens. All of us can get so, we can get so addicted to these things. Well, guess what? They clog up. They clog up your hearing. And so 
there are so many sounds out there and this is this is what they're hearing okay I mean they can tune in and begin to enjoy this kind of stuff right here crank it up So it's a choice. Uh, I'm sorry to say, you can't, it's a hard job. You can't do it. I know, we know firsthand, you cannot control this in your children. You know, we, we have, we can tell you, we went out and we disconnected it from the house. That's, I mean, curbing it, you know, from our kids. There's only, they've got to grow up. And they're at a perfect time to begin to make choices. Have self-government. The best form of government is self-government. And we want to teach them self-government to make wise choices. Well, this might be a little better here, you know. Is uh, more of what we're familiar with. You know, that other station I had, I didn't want to play it very long. In fact, that's the best I heard of it. There are so many subliminal, whatever you call it, <laughs> messages in some of this, these beats and these things like that. Uh, in Africa, a YWAM team was over there. I heard this many years ago. With the, you know, and they went in. This uh, music team went in, and they were really, you know, this modern contemporary music. People started coming out of the jungles, and they says, "You're calling the demons out." I mean, yeah. so. We have to be really cautious what we're listening to because there are a lot of messages out there and we need quiet times to really hear the Lord. So that's one of the object lessons there. Let me see now. Yeah, what? Do we want to go into that next object lesson? Okay, all right. This is really important. This, this is, uh, there's two kinds of lives, okay? Two kinds of lives. Actually, I guess there's three, but I'm going to show you two right here. Okay, next chart. Okay, this is the self-directed life. This chair here is like the throne of your heart, the throne of your life. Who is on that? Who are you serving? Mm -hmm. When you're born and you're an infant, and as you grow up, everything's done for you. You're in the center right here. I mean, you're, you, you don't have to feed yourself. You're fed. You don't have to go to the bathroom. You know, your diapers are changed. Everything, everybody is serving you. Self is in the center of your life. Self is on the throne. Well, someday we grow up and we don't just sit around and let the food come to us from mommy or whatever. You know, you've got to grow up and do something for yourself. In fact, you got to learn to cook maybe for yourself, you know. But the trouble with this is that if you stay there, if that self, if, if you're serving yourself, there was a, remember, you guys, older people probably that remember Bob Dylan, he had a song called, You Gotta Serve Somebody. You will serve somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, be wise about who you choose to serve. Yourself. If you sue, it, Proverbs says there is a way which seems right to a man, but it's in, is a way of death. So you may think you're, you got this, you got a high IQ or something, got good grades. Hey, I can work my way out of anything. No, it can be death. So what happens when that is on the throne, when the self, the whole world revolves around the self? Then it's really misdirected. Your interests are directed to yourself, resulting in discord and frustration. Christ is somewhere out here. But the trouble with that is that you start wanting to have friends that you can control, you know, do what you want them to do, or make them do what you want to do. You're not interested in what they want to do. And you, you know? may be going to church and looking like a Christian on the yeah. outside. Yeah, you might be looking. Okay, so that's one kind of life. Self is on the throne. Of course, you know, I'm not showing the third or 